back, it's Christina again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a donkey. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, here's the donkey. Um, so, I've decided to go a little bit more, uh, the sketch itself's a little bit more cartoony. Um, I'm still going to draw in that same style, so we're still going to add the individual strokes. Um, I'm probably going to transition a bit to doing a few of these more cartoonish ones. Just... They're easier to sketch out, you know, you don't have to measure and, and take time to make sure you're getting dimensions and proportions correct. Um, it's, it's a lot faster to kind of draw out these. And the nice thing about it, and something that people really resonate with, is you can pull an emotion with these a little bit more um, than you can with, you know, uh, an image of, of an animal, uh, sort of a generic animal, because they're, you know, not always a chance to show emotion on their faces, as opposed to a cartoon. Um, so really the big difference here is that the eyes are fully forward facing instead of to the side. Well, you wouldn't really see that with a donkey, but um, when you're doing a cartoon, you want to make sure that their eyes are forward facing and looking at you for the most part, with the exception of something like a toucan or, or you know, animals where they're distinctly, their eyes are on opposite sides. But um, in the case of this donkey or like rabbits or other sort of animals like that, where their eyes would be kind of poking out over here, um, you would push them a little bit more forward um, and then you know you can you can change the features just that little bit and it'll still read as as whatever as a donkey or whatever it is so gonna start the same way it's gonna have some white going into this grayish brownish mostly grayish color um, with the little black tuft up here so white down here by his nose um, and we're gonna do you know when I'm doing this it's one stroke with a stroke in between right so this is kind of a sketching step you have the nostril coming down over here and so um, as we bring that down, you would have then the bottom poking back out. So we can change that angle a bit to indicate that um, there's a, a sort of a dip, a gap, you know, whatever you want to call it. And just sort of build that up. One line in between the other. Bringing it down. And then, right, same thing over here, right? Bring that down end it at that line for the nostril so don't go over make sure that's nice and clean and then underneath change that angle just a little bit and see what's going to happen is when we pop off that sketch you can see it even with us at even before we've added highlights and shadows so that's one way to kind of help um, indicate that there's something different happening here that there's a line here even if it seems subtle um, it'll be noticeable so um, you want to avoid line conflicts. I'm going to do that by bringing this straight down, right? So there's no angling in the middle. And then when we get to the bottom, you know, if we want to, we can angle out in either direction, right? But I wouldn't do that until we have a, a sort of a straight down path. And in fact, that's not straight yet. So I'm going to take that away. Want it kind of balanced, right? So if if this is the middle and his head's kind of turned a little bit to the side to give it a little bit more movement. Right, and then we'll just bring that down. Again, having those lines start where that that nostril is. So I'm going to finish the um, white here. Oh, the same is true for here, right? This is his bottom lip, right? Coming straight down. And then as we go off to the side, now we can start angling that a bit more and then stopping those lines um, at the mouth instead of pushing them through just like the mouth, you know, just like we did with those nostrils, right? Stopping that so that it doesn't push all the way through. And again, you should get the effect here that the mouth is down there. Okay, so I'm going to finish up the nose and I'll be right back. All right. So when you pull back, you know, you kind of see that happening. Now the eyes, also around the eyes, we're going to have some white. So, you know, eyes, you need to be a bit more careful to be a bit straight. We have the um, eyelid coming up over too that we've distinguished as something different. Not something that I would typically do, but I did because it's a little bit more cartoony. So you would have a little bit more of those features that wouldn't usually show up um, on, you know, a donkey on animals. Oh, and then I messed up that too. Also giving it um, 
um, it's going to have some uh, white for the uh, on the eye here. Which normally they wouldn't have. Again, that's just something that I'm adding in because I'm creating this little bit more of a cartoony-like character. Right on eyes, though, you're going to swoop up, kind of up and over because you have the bulge of the eye happening. Um, whether or not I put the eyebrow in, I haven't decided that. It'd be easy enough. So we'll see. Same thing is true on this side. I'm gonna have this come up and over. And then we have kind of this little eyebrow I've drawn in. See if we stick to it or not. I'm being careful around the eye to be nice and clean. Eyes are something we always look at, so it's important that it is um, nice and sort of clean lines around it. You know, otherwise it doesn't matter if we push off the edge of the, the image, right? But will, if we do it for an eye, it's just, you know, we pick up things like that. So if we pop that off, once again, now we have kind of this eye shape. Uh, and then the last white is for the ears. So the ears, it's popping out over here. Um, so same thing, except, you know, this will be a different color going up the back. Pushing this out because of that angle of the ear and just building it up like the others. So I'm going to finish up the ears and I'll be right back. All right, so that's what we have now. So now let's move to this brownish gray and just continue building up. So a lot of animals... Um, and donkeys are certainly one of those animals. So like, by a lot of animals, I mean like donkeys and horses and stuff. You have this kind of center point where the hair is going in different directions. So you certainly have the hair that's still going up and down, but then you also kind of have this hair that's twisting at the side, but only in that center point. It's almost right between the eyes that this happens. Um, a lot of other animals, you don't see that happening. I've only noticed it on a handful with um, zebras and horses and donkeys, so those sorts of animals that seem to have this effect instead of, you know, the hair kind of twisting out and over as it comes over the nose. It, it doesn't seem to do that. It has this little spot where it twists up. So um, otherwise still building up this the same way, but a little easier because now we can kind of uh, come straight down instead of having to twist the lines. So uh, I'm, tr I'm bending my lines a little bit, right, as I, as I come over here to the edge of this. It's not really um, a, a, it's going to be kind of like a ridge. So they can overlap, but I'm going to swoop my lines in a different way to indicate that this is an overlap, like an overhang, right? Come here, they're kind of looping over and then loop it down and then loop it back over because, well, you have the cheek that's, that's pushing out. So then it would loop back create um, some texture and some, you know, feeling of um, contouring on the face. And it's okay if you push the lines off. And then, you know, on the forehead it would just come up, right? You're just going to start bringing this up and leveling that out. So I'm going to finish up uh, the face and the ears, and I'll be right back. All right, so that's where we are. Still the eyebrows are in place. Figure out what to do there. And I'm just going to bring this all the way in. OK. So then um, we have the hair up top. I'm going to select this darker gray. For the moment, and we'll do some lines for the hair. All right, I have it going in a way that it wouldn't usually go. I just thought it looked cool. Again, that <laughs> there's some freedom you don't usually have um, when drawing. 
when you're doing it a little bit more cartoony. Um, if we're going to do that, we can also use this gray for the eyebrows, if we so desire. Yeah. So that's where we are. Okay. I should also mention, um, as I do this, I'm using the hard round brush from Photoshop set to a size of 15 and my canvas is a 15 by 18. I always forget to say that but it's usually what I'm working on. I try to, I'll try to remember to say that every video but it's 15 by 18 and then hard round at um, set to a brush size of 15 and my um, brush, right, if I draw down the lighter I push the thinner my line goes so the heavier I push the darker it gets. Works really nicely for hair. All right. So, we'll start on the shadows and highlights. So lights are coming, gonna come from above and to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the gray so I don't get confused. I'm gonna start in the um, white first. And, you know, all edges are in shadow. So as we're shadowing this in, this is going to be light pin pressure where they're shadowing. Even on the side of the light source, it's the nature of how things work. Even though it's on the side of the light source, the light source is above and in front of, so it's not directly next to it, which means even on the side of the light source, you're going to have shadowing, just not as much as you will on the back side. Um, that's how you indicate an object is three-dimensional. It has roundness to it. Right, so we have, you know, the bottom here where that lip is curling under. And then we're going to be coming to this back side, which is going to have even more shadowing on it as the face would be turning away from that light source. So light, light pin pressure. Um, all on this side, going to have a good bit of shadow. comes out of the nostril over here. And then um, there's probably, you know, just a little bit of, well, there will be just a little bit of shadowing at the top of the nostril too, because that would be bending over into um, that space. Gonna get a little bit on this side as well, but not as much. And that's gonna transition as that light's hitting. All right, so we have potentially all of this in shadow. I might change that. It's easier to add highlight than it is to take it away. So it's easier to do something in shadow completely. So it's easier to do something in shadow completely than it is to um, do something as a highlight and then decide it's wrong. All right, so I'm gonna finish the nose so the rest of this is going to be highlight, and that is full pin pressure, right? That's that full pin pressure. You can see the difference. Um, and I'll be right back. Okay, so then um, we have the chin. I'm going to do the chin all in shadow before I add the highlights to it. It's, again, it's just easier that way. So it won't take long, it's just that um, partial pin pressure. Not putting a lot. Leaving that gap, that'll help, you know, um, indicate where his mouth is. Right? We have that little bit of a mouth. And then we're going to add just a little bit, kind of right in the middle here. Give that chin just a little bit of attention. Not a lot of space, so don't have to add a lot of pin pressure here, just have to add more lines, and that'll brighten it up. Makes it easy to um, brighten something up when you do it that way. Okay. 
So, I'm just gonna flush this out just a little bit more. Maybe pull it down just a little bit. Won't be anything big. Just to give it some more breathing room. Yeah. Now for uh, the eyes, or the white right around the eyes. So, again, all edges are in shadow, right? So we're gonna have that edge in shadow here without being too overzealous. And then sometimes it helps to pop the sketch back on because I am, or we do have that little bit of a eyelid. And then under the eye, we'll also have some shadowing which we'll do in a second. So I'm going to get just that little bit of an eyelid into place. There'll be some shadowing right around there. And of course the same thing on this side. Shadowing by the eyelid. And then shadowing on this whole back side. And then I just need to be careful by the eye. That's why I keep popping this back on. So this by the eye though, right here will be in full highlight. It's just a matter of bringing this over and then as I connect them in, I back off my pin pressure so that I can use more lines to brighten it up instead of more pin pressure because it gets so thick. Um, and so you can see adding more lines brightens that up and then I can blend it in nicer. So all of that would be full pin pressure here. Uh, and so then on this side, kind of the same thing. I'm going to give a full burst under the eye, even though technically with donkeys that wouldn't necessarily happen because their faces would be turned, but I do this even when I'm drawing um, realistically. It's just, um, it helps to draw attention to the eyes, and eyes are the first thing we look at, so that's why I do it. Okay. Now I'm going to draw the rest of this in, um, this side mostly being in shadow, most of this being in highlight, and I will be right back. So now we just have the ears, um, and then we'll move on to the brown. So for the ears, right, it's it's dipping into this other layer. I might pop you back on. Sometimes it's helpful to see exactly what I'm doing. So some of this is going to be in shadow, right, because it's going into the depth of his ear, but this ear is on the highlight side, so some of this may also be in highlight. Again, it's just sometimes easier to draw the whole thing in shadow. So I'm going to draw both ears in shadow. Um, it, again, it's just with that backed off pin pressure, and I'll be right back. I'll add a bit of highlight. Right, It goes into a recess into the ear, and then all edges are in shadow. We have this bit in the middle that will be catching some light. So not adding more pin pressure, again, just adding more lines. So once you lay the foundation, it's easy to brighten something up. So I'll just get this middle in, and we can brighten it however much we want. It is on the side of highlight, so this may be deserving of a little bit more light than the other side be much more in shadow. I want to be sure that's catching though. And I always like to back out because I can see more backed out than when I'm up close as to how something is looking. Okay, so on the other side we'll give a little bit, but not a lot, not nearly as much as we did just then. 
just enough to distinguish it. You know, you have areas that would be darker or brighter. It's darker where it's, it's disappearing behind the ear and areas that might be a little brighter because it's it'll be catching just a little bit more light, so. Okay. Now, we can switch to uh, the brown, the, well, grayish brown. Same thing, and we wanna match the shadows we did, right? So we had all of this over here in shadow, so that means all of this would also be in shadow. It's backed off pin pressure. Right as that came, comes down, sort of dipping behind and down here. Might give his cheek a little bit of highlight, but otherwise, all of this is just backed off pin pressure. It'll be easier to add those bursts of highlight just like we did with the ear after it's in shadow. You can really kind of see it starting to flush out. And you know, you have that dip in that nose where this is dropping down. Again, we don't have to follow that exactly. That's why there's a burst under the eye and we need to let that burst sort of push into the, the brown down here. Um, otherwise it'll be out of place. And then, you know, again, all edges are in shadow, so even on the side with the highlight, we're gonna have this edge that'll be in shadow. But then that will be in highlight. And then this edge in shadow on the head. And then, of course, this back side having shadow because it's on, you know, the back side. Sometimes that angle's a little hard for me. Now foreheads tend to get um, a lot more highlight than other areas, so there will be some amount of highlight that pushes over here, but not all the way. And you have, you know, the little his hair up here, which would be casting some as well. Now I'm going to give myself a little bit of a runway here to push the highlight down and over. Or but not much, doesn't need a ton, just needs some space to work with. And likewise, we're going to fill out some of that as well. So we bring that up. Okay, and the rest of this will be in highlight, but, right, we still need to connect in to this far left side, so this is going to push just a bit into what I've done, using more lines to brighten it up instead of more pin pressure. And then using more pin pressure as we come, you know, further away from that connection point. And then we push into the white instead. And then down here where we have that white with just that little bit of light, we're gonna allow that to push down into the brown just that bit and then taper it off where his cheek there would be catching some light. Okay, rest of this is in highlight. Uh, so I'll do the rest of the head and then we'll do the ears. And I will be right back. And we have the ears, so that same brown, but we have on that back side, right, all in shadow. On this ear, because this is the far side away from the highlight, whereas on this ear, it's the reverse of that. So we'll bring that down, right, all that's in shadow. 
Whereas on this here, we have that little bit of shadow like we get um, on the on the side over here. Just that little itty bit. But otherwise, it'll be in highlight because it'll be catching. Just that little bit coming down, connecting in. And then we'll have a little bit on the edge that's um, turned towards the hair on the ears, right towards that inside, because that's turning away. But that's adjustable. So the rest of that will be highlight. And then over here, Making sure this is a big enough shadow over here. Because you would keep getting some. I mean, it, it's going to have some highlight on it, but making sure it's got enough that shadow. And making sure that this makes sense and there's no weird jagged lines. Huh. Tapers off towards the top instead of some weird shelf on his ears. Okay. All right, so um, the rest of his ears are going to be in highlight, so I'm going to do that and be right back. It's going to be the um, eyebrows, so we don't have to do too much. And then the hair up top. Give it a little bit of highlighting in certain places, right, to indicate that something's pushing forward somewhere versus receding back elsewhere. So even though it's longer hair, um, that still kind of uh, follows, right? So on this back side, you still have shadowing, and then you know underneath, and then you'll have some brighter spots where lights catching certain certain strands, certain hair. And then pulling that up. Doesn't have to be straight or perfect, I'm sort of messing the hair up because it's all just uh right kind of cartoony, so it doesn't really matter. It's not really how the hair would look, and that's fine. Right, so then we have <laughs> Some hair flopping happening, which isn't necessarily how a donkey's hair would do, but maybe a little bit. Okay. All right. And then we just have um, the eyes. So usually, you know, I don't do this, but when you're drawing a cartoon, the um, you would have the white the whites of the eyes like you do with people. So after I do this, I'm going to add just a little bit of highlight to the white here before I move on to um, the iris. This will allow me to get this sort of situated and straight since we have a couple layers going on here. Right, so now we have <laughs> that happening. So you know, I want to make sure that it looks like it's going under this um, fur coming out. So this needs to go into shadow here. But then with the light source being above and to the right, I'm going to put that full pin pressure over here to catch that light. And that would run into the um, color. Pulling that over. Or otherwise clearly kind of dipping down. Same over here. Oh, trying to keep it somewhat straight though. So less so over on this side, right? Because you have that going into that shadow over there. Still a little bit of a burst, but not a lot. 
We're really bringing out the white, so giving a nice strong light over here. Okay, now that's part of it. Now we need the actual brown of the eyes. So now we're going to draw in the pupil. You know what, we're going to just go ahead and try that again. <laughs> You want to make sure it's looking at us. So to do that, you want it kind of on that inside, more towards the middle than you would think would be necessary. And then we're just going to fill in, just like we did with the white, we're going to fill in with the um, brown. So I'm going to do that on both eyes, and I'll be right back. I'm going to take the elliptical marquee tool Come in here. Before I do that, I'm going to narrow out my pupil. Give me some room to work. <laughs> On both sides. Okay. So an elliptical marquee tool. Over here, we're going to readjust until it's looking good, and then we're going to race. And then I'm going to select and inverse that so that I can fill in. It's going to leave some gaps when I do it. So I want to make sure that's nice and filled in and that there's no weird gap. OK, and then I'm going to select and inverse, reselect the elliptical marquee tool, and then drag that selection over to the other eye where we're going to do the same thing. Find the right spot. Erase, select inverse, and then use that line, and that selection, to create a nice sort of clean um, pupil. All right, and then I'm going to select and deselect, and you can see that really helps create that line. Now, for the highlights, like always, light source coming from above and to the right, therefore, there would be a burst of highlight against the pupil on the opposite side of the light source because the pupil is a recess. So just like if you were you had a coffee lid or something, coffee cup you were looking into the hole of, it's going to catch the light on the opposite side of that light source. Um, and then on the side of the light source, you're going to have the highlight, so that's full pin pressure, but it's going to go into shadow before it hit, touches the um, white, and it's going to go into shadow against the edge of the pupil on the side of the light source. But it's going to be that bright all the way underneath, all the way under here. And then the rest of it's going to be in shadow, with the deepest shadow being up in here. Right, so once we come to this side, this is also shadow. But it is brighter, certainly, than what's above. Going into that shadow on that edge. And then being careful above, because this will all be really dark. Usually I don't do it this way. When I'm drawing realistically, I, I leave it black, but because we added the white, I needed to add the rest of the color in. So sometimes I do this with like bird's eyes because their eyes are so wide, you can't just leave this giant black recess in their, in their heads. Um, but, you know, with this cartoonier style, I would need to do it too. It's okay to be a little swirly though and to not be even, just making sure that everything else is brighter, right? So then I can brighten up what I need to brighten up. And then when you back out, he won't look shocked, which is really the goal. You don't want him to look shocked. <laughs> It'd be unfortunate. 
Same thing on this side. You're going to have bigger highlight over here, but we're, we're looking at limited space going into, you know, that shadow against the pupil and that highlight being highlight all the way underneath, but then going into shadow all down that back side. So he doesn't get a lot of highlight on this side, but he's going to have more highlight on this back side than he does on the top. So just making sure this pops. So this is highlight going into that shadow and then going into the shadow above. And then making sure there's no weird transition or line or anything that makes it look like something's out of place. Yeah, so then the last thing I add for eyes is one of the most important things, which is the light flare on their eyes. Um, so it's gonna be on the side of the light source I'm going to take the elliptical marquee tool, make a little like, you know, circle, make sure it's in the light source and not in the shadow, or in the light and not the shadow, and then just fill it with the foreground color, which I already changed to white, and then drag it over to the other side and do the same thing over here, making sure it's kind of lined up to the way you did it on the first side. All right, so that's how you draw a donkey. I hope that's helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I've done. I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.